Thank you to Draper and its Hack the Moon initiative for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Here's a ridiculous idea. Imagine I snapped a twig in an isolated forest. Then a listener on the opposite side of the planet hears the sound vibrations created by the snap and just by hearing it can tell you exactly where I was, at what time I snapped it, and even what kind of tree the twig came from. Of course, this is impossible, but what if I told you that human beings could do something similar, but even more impressive? Instead of a snapped twig, the source of the vibration is a violent event in space, an event that we can detect here on Earth, even though it occurred billions of light years away and billions of years in the past. All we had to do was build one of the largest and most sensitive devices ever created, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO. I'm driving alongside one of the four kilometer long arms of LIGO, the first ever observatory to observe gravitational waves. The arm is so long that they actually had to correct for the curvature of the Earth. And we're about to go inside to the facility to see all the instrumentation. I am so excited. We're getting on some of our clean room garb. This is a class 10,000 clean room. There's more classes, but this is pretty clean. This is cool. So this is like laser starts over there, then there's mirrors here, beam splitter, laser splits. We've got the arm going this way, another arm going that way. It's all in this room. So this is like the brain, the guts, the like, this yes. is everything. Up until extremely recently, astronomy was based almost exclusively on studying light. But LIGO is not like other observatories. It's blind. It senses no part of the electromagnetic spectrum, like visible light, microwaves, radio waves. Instead, it detects gravitational waves, which are a completely separate phenomenon from light. In 1916, when Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, he predicted that masses accelerating in space would create ripples in the fabric of space-time itself. For decades, no one knew if these ripples, called gravitational waves, actually existed. But 99 years later, in 2015, the LIGO team finally sensed a series of extremely tiny vibrations, a thousandth the width of a proton. To get to that level of sensitivity, they needed to create an observatory that was unlike anything else on Earth. Rather than pointing a mirrored sensor at the stars, they built this L-shaped detector with two four kilometer long vacuum tubes. The arms are covered in concrete, so they're completely protected from all the elements. Then they use lasers and mirrors to detect the compression of gravity with special suspensions that actively cancel out any vibrations generated from activity on the Earth. And they needed to build two of them 3,000 kilometers apart to operate in complete coordination because a random vibration at one location could create a false signal that looks like a gravitational wave, but isn't. If a detection is made at both places, you eliminate the possibility of it just being a local disturbance. The beam splitter itself is in this large chamber right here. Oh, cool. But part of the reason why that's so large as well is not just the mirror, yeah. but you've got it in that quad suspension system. And right. that quad suspension system is really where the magic is in reducing the ground vibrations. Because if you don't reduce those ground vibrations, you don't make detections. And you have that quad suspension system on? On the four main mirrors, as well as the beam splitter. Okay. So the five largest optics that we have, that is in those suspension systems. Gotcha. We really say every vibration bothers us and we mean it from the thermal effects on the mirrors to earthquakes in Australia, they all can cause us problems. After months of analysis, scientists confirmed that the vibrations detected in 2015 were the signature of two black holes merging. It was a violent event that had occurred 1.3 billion light years away and 1.3 billion years in the past. It also confirmed that an entirely new type of astronomy was possible. Wow, so this is it. Those are where the lasers exit the the enclosure area and go directly into the vacuum system. Wow. Yeah. There are laser beams going through these tubes? Yes. That is very exciting. They're in infrared though, so we would not even be able to see them if there were no protective tubes there, but still. There's this laser beam that comes out and it's got, it's a bit messy. It's got different, it's different sort of spatial patterns and they clean it before it gets sent out into the arms. But then you're telling me now that it, they also clean the input that comes back in, or the, the output, output is yeah, what you call absolutely. it. Yeah. So you're getting rid of the patterns of the light you don't want. Right. And then you're you do that before it goes in and you also do that on the way back out. So yeah, the light comes back in, recombines, and then it goes down here for detection. And then detection yep. happens, happens over here. Happens down here. So this 
Like this part that we're gonna walk up to, this is where the detection happened. Yeah. I hate to say where the magic happened because the magic happens all over, but <laughs> <laughs> this is where the actual detections are made. This is amazing. <laughs> you have to see this. <laughs> The beam makes it here where you've got the detector. That's where the detection mm -hmm. happens. And I actually have the photodiode in my office that saw the first gravitational wave ever, GW150914. How did you get that? <laughs> well, because I have to put it out. Okay. <laughs> We're putting goggles on to protect from the infrared laser, um, which you wouldn't be able to see, but you would be able to feel it. LIGO is allowing researchers to explore areas of the universe that were previously hidden because their energy is emitted by objects that are inherently dark, like the collision of black holes. We now know that over millions of pairs of black holes revolve around each other in binary systems. As they orbit, these pairs emit gravitational waves, which removes some of the system's energy and forces the pair to rotate faster and closer together. But because this energy isn't released as light, prior to the detection of gravitational waves, we were never able to observe them, and the very existence of such black hole binaries was contested. But perhaps the most exciting use of gravitational wave detection is yet to come. In the very first moments of the universe, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, two of the fundamental forces of the universe, were indistinguishable. But when those forces separated, they're believed to have produced gravitational waves. And unlike light waves, gravitational waves interact extremely weakly with matter. So much so that gravitational waves could still be traveling from a time when the universe was a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second old. If we can build a detector with enough sensitivity to observe these waves, they might give us some information about the very first moments of our universe which is very exciting. And while this degree of accuracy might be far off, the stunning success of LIGO so far has empowered the advancement of bigger, more sensitive gravitational wave detectors around the world and even in space. Ultimately, gravitational waves tell us how stars live and die. They give us insight into the lifespan of ravenous black holes, and they may reveal what happened at the very beginning of time. Gravitational waves are a profound expansion of our human senses, broadening our vision and bringing us one step closer to understanding the inner workings of the universe. Now that you know all about gravitational waves, keep watching as Joe Hansen explores how scientists created humanity's first image of a black hole with a telescope the size of the Earth. Thank you to Draper and its Hack the Moon initiative for supporting PBS Digital Studios. You know the story of the astronauts who landed on the moon. Now you can log on to wehackthemoon.com to discover the story of the male and female engineers who guided them there and back safely. Hack the Moon chronicles the engineers and technologies behind the Apollo missions. Brought to you by Draper, the site is full of images, videos, and stories about the people who hacked the moon. PBS is bringing you the universe with the Summer of Space, which includes six incredible new science and history shows airing on PBS and streaming on pbs.org and the PBS video app. Watch it all on pbs.org slash summer of space.